September 7th. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for another day. Thank you that your mercies are new every morning. Thank you for believers around the world who are praying for Israel and praying for unity in the church. Jesus, I pray that you would help us to stand for your truth, to stand in unity, and to pray and call out the enemy that you would defeat him where we are. Jesus, I ask that you would help me to bring glory to this reading of your word. In your name we pray. Amen. Song of Solomon 5, 1 through 8, 14. The Beloved. I have come to my garden, my sister, my spouse. I have gathered my myrrh with my spice. I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey. I have drunk my wine with my milk. To his friends. Eat, O friends. Drink, yes, drink deeply, O beloved ones. The Shulamite. I sleep, but my heart is awake. It is the voice of my beloved. He knocks, saying, Open for me, my sister, my love, my dove, my perfect one. For my head is covered with dew, my locks with the drops of the night. I have taken off my robe. How can I put it on again? I have washed my feet. How can I defile them? My beloved put his hand by the latch of the door, and my heart yearned for him. I arose to open for my beloved, and my hands dripped with myrrh, my fingers with liquid myrrh, on the handles of the lock. I opened for my beloved, but my beloved had turned away and was gone. My heart leaped up when he spoke. I sought him, but I could not find him. I called to him, but he gave me no answer. The watchmen who went about the city found me. They struck me. They wounded me. The keepers of the walls, they took my veil away from me. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, if you find my beloved, that you tell him I am lovesick. The daughters of Jerusalem. What is your beloved more than another beloved, O fairest among women? What is your beloved more than another beloved that you so charge us? The Shulamite. My beloved is white and ruddy, chief among ten thousand. His head is like the finest gold. His locks are wavy and black as a raven. His eyes are like doves by the rivers of waters, washed with milk and fitly set. His cheeks are like a bed of spices, banks of scented herbs. His lips are lilies, dripping liquid myrrh. His hands are rods of gold set with beryl. His body is carved ivory inlaid with sapphires. His legs are pillars of marble set on bases of fine gold. His countenance is like Lebanon, excellent as the cedars. His mouth is most sweet. Yes, he is altogether lovely. This is my beloved, and this is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem the daughters of Jerusalem. Where has your beloved gone, O fairest among women? Where has your beloved turned aside, that we may seek him with you? The Shulamite. My beloved has gone to his garden, to the beds of spices, to feed his flock in the gardens, and to gather lilies. I am my beloved's, and my beloved is mine. He feeds his flock among the lilies, the Beloved. O oh, my love, you are as beautiful as Terza, lovely as Jerusalem, awesome as an army with banners. Turn your eyes away from me, for they have overcome me. Your hair is like a flock of goats going down from Gilead. Your teeth are like a flock of sheep which have come up from the washing. Every one bears twins, and none is barren among them. Like a piece of pomegranate are your temples behind your veil. There are sixty queens and eighty concubines and virgins without number. My dove, my perfect one, is the only one, the only one of her mother, the favorite of the one who bore her. 
The daughters saw her and call her blessed, the queens and the concubines, and they praised her. Who is she who looks forth as the morning, fair as the moon, clear as the sun, awesome as an army with banners? The Shulamite I went down to the garden of nuts to see the verdure of the valley, to see whether the vine had budded and the pomegranates had bloomed. Before I was even aware, my soul had made me as the chariots of my noble people. The Beloved and His Friends Return, return, O Shulamite, return, return that we may look upon you. The Shulamite What would you see in the Shulamite, as it were, the dance of two camps? The Beloved how beautiful are your feet in sandals, O prince's daughter! The curves of your thighs are like jewels, the work of the hands of a skillful workman. Your navel is a rounded goblet, it lacks no blended beverage. Your waist is a heap of wheat, set about with lilies. Your two breasts are like two fawns, twins of a gazelle. Your neck is like an ivory tower your eyes like the pools of Heshbon by the gate of Bath Labim. Your nose is like the Tower of Lebanon, which looks toward Damascus. Your head crowns you like Mount Carmel, and the hair of your head is like purple. A king is held captive by your tresses. How fair and how pleasant you are, O love, with your delights! This stature of yours is like a palm tree, and your breasts like its clusters. I said, I will go up to the palm tree. I will take hold of its branches. Let now your breasts be like clusters of the vine, the fragrance of your breath like apples, and the roof of your mouth like the best wine. The Shulamite The wine goes down smoothly for my beloved, moving gently the lips of sleepers. I am my beloved's, and his desire is toward me. Come, my beloved, let us go forth to the field. Let us lodge in the villages. Let us get up early to the vineyards. Let us see if the vine has budded, whether the great blossoms are open and the pomegranates are in bloom. There I will give you my love. The mandrakes give off a fragrance, and at our gates are pleasant fruits, all manner new and old, which I have laid up for you, my beloved. Oh, that you were like my brother who nursed at my mother's breasts. If I should find you outside, I would kiss you. I would not be despised. I would lead you and bring you into the house of my mother, she who used to instruct me. I would cause you to drink of spiced wine, of the juice of my pomegranate. To the daughters of Jerusalem, his left hand is under my head, and his right hand embraces me. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, do not stir up, nor awaken love until it pleases. A relative. Who is this coming up from the wilderness, leaning upon her beloved? I awakened you under the apple tree. There your mother brought you forth. There she who bore you brought you forth. The Shulamite to her beloved. Set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm, for love is as strong as death, jealousy as cruel as the grave. Its flames are flames of fire, a most vehement flame. Many waters cannot quench love, nor can the floods drown it. If a man would give for love all the wealth of his house, it would be utterly despised. The Shulamite's Brothers we have a little sister, and she has no breasts. What shall we do for our sister in the day when she is spoken for? If she is a wall, we will build upon her a battlement of silver. And if she is a door, we will enclose her with boards of cedar. The Shulamite I am a wall, and my breasts like towers. Then I became in his eyes as one who found peace. Solomon had a vineyard at Baal Hamon. He leased the vineyards to keepers. Everyone was to bring for its fruit a thousand silver coins. To Solomon. 
My own vineyard is before me. You, O Solomon, may have a thousand, and those who tend its fruit two hundred. The Beloved, you who dwell in the gardens, the companions, listen for your voice. Let me hear it. The Shilamite, make haste, my beloved, and be like a gazelle or a young stag on the mountains of spices. Second Corinthians nine, one through fifteen. Now concerning the ministering to the saints, it is superfluous for me to write to you, for I know your willingness about which I boast of you to the Macedonians that Achaia was ready a year ago, and your zeal has stirred up. The majority. Yet I have sent the brethren, lest our boasting of you should be in vain in this respect, that, as I said, you may be ready, lest if some Macedonians come with me to find you unprepared, we, not to mention you, should be ashamed of this confident boasting. Therefore I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren to go to you ahead of time and prepare your generous gifts beforehand, which you had previously promised that it may be ready as a matter of generosity and not as a grudging obligation. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you that you always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. As it is written, He has dispersed abroad, he has given to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. Now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. While you are enriched in everything for all liberality, which causes thanksgiving through us to God. For the administration of this service not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also is abounding through many thanksgivings to God, while, through the proof of this ministry, they glorify God for the obedience of your confession to the gospel of Christ, and for your liberal sharing with them and all men, and by their prayer for you, who long for you because of the exceeding grace of God in you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Psalm 51, 1-19 To the chief musician, a psalm of David, when Nathan the prophet went to him after he had gone in to Bathsheba. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done this evil in your sight that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin my mother conceived me. Behold, you, Desire truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part you will make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear joy and gladness, that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me by your generous Spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall be converted to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall show forth your praise. For you do not desire sacrifice, or else I would give it. You do not delight in burnt offering. 
The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. These, O God, you will not despise. Do good in your good pleasure to Zion. Build the walls of Jerusalem. Then you shall be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offering and whole burnt offering. Then they shall offer bulls on your altar. Proverbs 22, 24 through 25. Make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man do not go, lest you learn his ways and set a snare for your soul. Thank you for joining me as we read Scripture for Life. Jesus, I pray that you would search each one of us, know our hearts, make us clean, make us more like you each and every day. Amen.